Hey everybody, welcome to Campus Comics Cast, coming to you from Carbondale, Illinois, with special guests from the Campus Comics crew, and now, here's your host, the man with the previews in hand, Mike No. Okay, I am here at Superman, the 2018 Superman Celebration with artist Alex Saviuk. And he has uh, worked with Marvel, DC, lots of independent publishers, including books like Action Comics, DC Comics Presents, Superman, Amazing Spider-Man, Web of Spider-Man, Green Lantern, Flash, Hawkman, Aquaman, and one of his earlier uh, works was with uh, the X Files with Tops. And that's just a small list of some of the books that he's working on. Worked on. Uh, how you doing today? I'm doing great. It's nice and cool here, and I'm really happy about that. Yeah. So, do you remember the first comic book that you ever purchased, or what your first uh, exposure to comic books was? Uh, yeah, um, actually, I guess superheroes. I would say my dad would always bring home this uh, newspaper in New York called the News Jour um, the Journal American, and there I got introduced to the Phantom and Flash Gordon, Mandrake the Magician. So. I got some, and also Tarzan, and so those were f early favorites of mine. And I used to watch Superman, um, the TV show in the late in the fifties, nineteen fifties, with George Reeves. And uh, but I only saw it in black and white. So when I was six years old, my dad brought me home my first Superman comic, um, and I got to see him in red, blue, and yellow. And I just kind of fell in love because I was already, you know, coloring and doing my own little things at home. And so yeah, that was just so neat to see him in color. Who would you consider is your biggest influence as an artist? Um, well, I guess I can't say who. There were just so many. I guess as a kid, whoever was drawing Superman, whoever was drawing Batman, um, there were, even, even back then, there were some artists that I would see draw Superman that I would like, and I would say, oh, he's, he's, the, he's the best guy that I like, and the same goes for Batman. Mm -hmm. Later on, I found out that I was probably talking about Wayne Boring and Kurt Swan on Superman and Dick Sprang on Batman, okay? So as a, ki as a, as a kid, and then growing up, of course, there was, you know, I, I became fond of Gil Kane and Murphy Anderson, Carmine Infantino. Those were my DC years, and then you get to Marvel, and of course, I got hit with Jack Kirby right away <laughs> and Steve Ditko and Don Heck and John Romita and John Buscema and... I guess I'm really pretty much a conglomeration of all those styles and influences that, you know, turned out to be me. Um, which of your past uh, projects would you consider yourself to be the most proud of or most representative of your work? Okay, well, I'd have to say <laughs> most representative of my, of my work is probably everything that I've done since I started, okay? <laughs> Although when you look back at the early stuff, sometimes you look at a couple of things and you kind of cringe. Yes. <laughs> and you say, wow, I'm so glad that they still hired me. But uh, at, I still remember at uh, DC Comics, um, when I was drawing Green Lantern, they were going to be doing a Green Lantern annual at one point. Mm -hmm. And then it was going to be obviously a double-sized story, so it was going to be about 35 pages. And then they shelved that idea, and it ended up being a two-part story. And what was so great about that part, with, about that story, was that it featured uh, Alan Scott, the Earth Two Green Lantern, right. and I got to draw the Guardians on their home planet, and um, a lot of outer space stuff, and the origin of Green Lantern, both Green Lanterns, and uh, so it was a really fun story to have to, to have drawn. And a lot of big panels because I guess they figured it was going to be an annual. So I got a, a if they call it, we always call those big panels the money shots. <laughs> and so there are a lot of money shots throughout this whole thing because of, uh, I guess, the way it was planned out. I usually, I usually call them splash pages. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Um, well, when I say money shots, you could have a, like, just a big panel on a page. It doesn't right, have to out. be a whole splash page. Yes. It could be just a giant panel. Now, if you would have had the story be more like, uh, a 20 page story or a 22 page story they probably would have made you would you would have had to have drawn those panels smaller it would have had to have been edited right. down okay right. but that was a great project and then one of my first superman uh, stories that i ever drew for julie schwartz was dc comics presents number 46 superman and the global guardians 
And that was just such a... They were characters I had never drawn before and hardly even, some of them I hardly even heard of, but they were just so much fun. because And we did it almost like a Justice League of America, old school style, where we had chapters. Superman and this hero, Superman and that hero, and, and so on and so forth. And in the last chapter, everybody got together. So uh, that was a 25-page story done years ago, inked by Pablo Marcos, who I always enjoyed working with. And um, if you're listening to this, um, go find that issue. It's a lot of fun. Uh, what are you currently working on, or do you have any uh, future books that are in the works? Uh, well, currently I, I've been drawing the Superman, uh, the Spider-Man uh, newspaper strip for 21 years now. And um, actually I've been drawing the Sunday pages for 21 years, and I've been inking the dailies for the last, I guess, 15 years. And um, so that's every week. And um, also I've been drawing the Phantom for a European publisher, um, and in Sweden, and also those stories usually get sent over to Australia at a company called Fru, where they, I guess, retranslate them into English and they publish them there in black and white. But um, at this particular point, um, I'm also going to be working on the Phantom for a company in Ireland, uh, Dublin, Ireland, and they're called Lightning Strike Comics. And they started up last year, and they did two issues of The Phantom, and I guess they were successful. And this year they're doing four, and I've been contracted to do two. So that's happening for the rest of this year, so that'll be taking up my, most of my time. And then, Nick, I was already contacted again by the Swedish company, and they'll have another story for me to do early next year. Um, aside from that, I would say um, back in 2005, I contributed artwork to a graphic novel by a writer... Uh, filmmaker, director, friend of mine, mm -hmm. and it was called Feast of the Seven Fishes, okay. and it was based primarily about um, like around Christmas time uh, for an Italian family and all the relationships and things that go on around Christmas, and the, seven, the Feast of the Seven Fishes is an actuality because on Christmas Eve, a lot of Italian families and even European families, they cook a lot of fish, okay? <laughs> so it's kind of, I guess that's just the, that particular angle for the title. Um, at the time, uh, the, the writer, uh, Robert Tunnell, mm -hmm. one of his uh, goals in life was to turn that into a film. Right. And he finally realized his dream by having the film shot in January of this year. Okay. And right now it's in post-production, and hopefully it'll come out by Christmas. Oh, excellent. So that's kind of neat. And then uh, also, uh, when I was working on Web of Spider-Man, I co-created a character called um, Nightwatch with Terry Cavanaugh, the writer. Mm -hmm. And I just re read recently that Spike Lee is interested in directing a movie oh, wow. featuring the Night Watch character. And then I also, also, I also co-created or co-designed a character called Tombstone right. in, in Web of Spider-Man, mm -hmm. number 36, with Jerry Conway. And um, I found out recently that there were rumors that he might show up in the next Spider-Man movie. Okay. Okay, so again, that's, that's a rumor... More so now, I don't know how much of a rumor it is anymore because they just announced that we're going to have the Vulture and Mysterio in the next Spider-Man right. movie. And although Tombstone is not one of these flashy, I guess, super CGI guys because he's more of a mob enforcer, mm -hmm. but as soon as they mentioned his name, I said, wow, they could easily get Kevin Nash to play him because he's about six foot eight and Tombstone's a big guy and right. Kevin would fit that profile to a T. He might be a good character to show up on the Luke Cage uh, Netflix series as well. So, <laughs> is is have you heard that? No, I just oh. say he he would be a good fit there. Oh, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so. that would be cool. So, if uh, people wanted to keep up with you and the work that you're doing, where would be the best place for them to to get that information? I would say just look on Facebook, Instagram, um, more so Facebook. Uh, you can just look me up. I've got a personal page. I've got a, a fan page, either Alex Saviak or Alex Saviak Artist. And um, you can always Facebook message me there if you're interested in just, you know, chatting or maybe looking for a commission or anything like that. Right. Excellent. Thank you so much for your time. All right. Thank you. So I'm still here at Superman Celebration with Alex Saviak, and he wanted to mention uh, some other work on some of his Marvel, Marvel work. So, Yeah, when I got to Marvel, I guess... Um, I got to draw Spider-Man pretty early on, and um, I guess one of the high points for me was to draw a graphic novel called Parallel Lives, written by Jerry Conway, mm -hmm. and um, it, was just, it was just so much fun because it was a super large format. I got to draw a lot of the old villains that I admired over the years, and uh, that was really, really a cool project. And then 
the 30th anniversary issue of Web of Spider-Man, um, of Sp uh, the anniversary of Spider-Man actually, and I was drawing Web of Spider-Man at the time, uh, was Web number 90, and it was written by Howard Mackey, and it featured Mysterio as the villain, but there were so many cool images throughout the entire thing before we got to, I guess, it was a 39-page story, and by the time we got to about page 35, finally we get to see Mysterio in his full glory, but all the things that were leading up to were just so cool. Um, if you've never read that story or had a chance to look at it, definitely pick it up. This, it's so much fun. Um, and also, I guess after that, I was, um, I was part of the Maximum Carnage series. Right. So Web of Spider-Man had three issues in that. And again, there were just so many cool villains and uh, other characters, other heroes that were involved in that. Uh, it was just, you know, quite a bit of fun.